What you just saw is the text stutter effect and it's a really engaging way to introduce a new location and it's super easy to do. Let's jump into Final Cut. I've already created the This Is title because that's not the focus of this tutorial, but I thought I'd show it to you quickly anyway in case anybody has any questions about it. It's simply a compound clip. Inside the compound clip is this basic title with the words This Is and I've created a compound clip so that I can cut it and on the first clip I've added a crop from the right hand side just to crop the word is off. So it animates on screen like that. Okay, so let's focus on the actual stutter effect. I'll go to the beginning of this clip and hit Control T to add a basic title and I'm going to trim this down kind of to where the train would cover the text. Now having the train cover the text is an additional step but it's just a nice little fun thing to do. So I'm going to select this title and type the word Porto and then I'll go ahead and look for a font that I like. And now I want to make sure that this text is centered, so I'll click on the view drop down menu over here and I'll turn on my horizon overlay and I'll just make sure that this text snaps to the horizontal and vertical grid. And then I'll go ahead and turn that off again. Now the idea here is to go two frames at a time and make a cut every two frames. There is a faster way to do this. I'll go to the end of the clip and I'll just sort of scrub back here until the train is out of the frame. That's sort of where I want the title to dock. If you remember from the example, the text stutters and then it lands on one final font. So that's what this last little piece is. And the fastest way to then cut this up is to select the clip and then with the left arrow key, tap it twice and then hit Command B to cut. And I can just repeat that and it's a much faster way of cutting this clip up instead of having to click to cut every two frames. And this part is pretty simple. I'll select the first title and I'll change the font. I'll just find something that I like and I'll kind of repeat this process for every one of these two frame cuts. I'll speed this part up so you don't have to watch me doing it for every single one and this is what it looks like. Now what I'd like to do is just let this train mask the text out. So I'll find the part where the train does not cover the text at all and I'll hold down option and click to drag a copy and I'll shorten this clip there and I only need this short little piece over here. Let me just hit Control shift s to remove that audio and I can delete that. Then on this clip, I'm going to hit Command Control m to add a magnetic mask and I'll just select this train. I can hold down Option to remove any of the areas that I don't want to include in the mask and I'll hit Analyze. If I go through frame by frame, you'll see that covers the text nicely. So I'll hit Done and I'll move this clip on top of the text. Lastly, I'll adjust the feathering on the mask so that it covers the text properly. That looks great, but it's missing the most important part, sound design. By the way, I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and if you feel like you've learned something useful in this video and that I've earned a new subscriber, I'd really appreciate you helping me reach that goal. I've imported the sound effects I'm going to use in this video, and I'll play them back for you real quick. I have two impacts. I also have a riser. And I have a suck back. Lastly, I have some clicking sounds which I'll use on the text stutter effect itself. Okay, so let's build this up. I'm going to take these impact sounds for the this is text and I'm just going to duplicate that by holding down option. And then I want the second hit to happen as soon as the text appears for the word Porto. And I want this riser and the suck back sound to kind of happen throughout the text stutter effect until we dock on that final font. So let me bring these in real quick. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to adjust the suck back until it sort of ends right around here where this text pops up. And I'm going to do the same thing for the riser. What you can do is select both of these and hit option S to solo them just to see how that's sounding. That's perfect. So I might just trim these and have them fade in over time so that there's a bit more of a dramatic rise in volume. And then I'll hit option S to unsolo those. I'll also just trim this one to tidy it up. And now let's go ahead and add these clicking sound effects in here. We know that each of these is two frames long. So essentially I want to have all of these two frames with the click happening at the very beginning of the clip. If I move frame by frame to try and cut it, you'll see if I made a cut here, it doesn't quite happen at the very beginning. So what I'm going to do is just roughly cut these so that I have it as close to the beginning of the click as possible. And I'll just adjust these and you'll see why in just a second. So let's say that's enough. I'll hit Command G to group those together. 
select them all and hit Ctrl D to adjust the duration and I'll make it two frames and hit enter. Now I can zoom in here and if I hit T to activate the trim tool, I can just adjust the timing of these sound effects so that the click happens at the very beginning. So I'll do that on all of these just to get it the timing nice. This one's got a second click in it. I'll take that out and so does that one. So let's take these effects and bring them to the beginning. We don't have enough. You could keep getting some more unique ones, but I like to just copy them across and I'm going to have them end right over here when we change to the last font. And there's one more little touch that I like to add, and that is to select all of these, hit Option G to create a compound clip, and then I'm going to add my free glint effect, and that just gives the text a really nice glow. This is obviously too much. We can just adjust this like so, and this glint effect is much better than Final Cut Pro's built-in glow effect. One last time, it looks like this. I'm sure you'll agree that the sound design takes that effect to a whole new level. And that's why you absolutely must watch this video next so that you can level up your sound design skills.